Okay, this lecture is about freedom versus slavery. And one of the reasons why I go through this is it's been my personal experience that if you ask any person, they'll say, oh, slavery is bad. But that same person who says slavery is bad will support and vote for almost everything that promotes slavery. So basically, they're idiots. Okay, so just to help people understand what promotes your freedom as an individual versus what takes it away. So decentralization favors the individual local control of things, individuals making their own decision. That's good. Centralization, when everything is controlled from a central location, that is, that takes away the individual autonomy of people. For example, the public school system is largely controlled by central education centers that force all the schools to teach the same thing, to promote the same concepts. And that is bad, okay? Um, also, the idea of centralization relates to location of people. It's easier to control people when they're all crowded together in a big city. So there's a push to do that. There's even something called the 15-minute city. And I think what typically happens is something gets promoted as if it were a good thing. Oh, won't this be wonderful? You, everything is within a 15-minute drive for you. But it's really not so good when you're forced into those cities and it's hard for you to get out of them. Um, I lived in the city in the past and I hated it. Basically, there was so much traffic during rush hour, you could essentially barely go three blocks in a half an hour. That's how bad the traffic was. Um, and there's other problems with cities as well, as we all know. Okay, the next thing is rural living promotes individualism, and it promotes freedom and autonomy. People in a big city, they've got surveillance out the wazoo, all kinds of hassles. Uh, there's even something called geofencing, geographic fencing, whereby... Um, people, you know, are limited in where they're allowed to go. There's travel limitations, and we've already heard of some of those, and those are not good. Um, the other big thing is more and more push for a digital ID, probably through face recognition. Uh, but you know, there this is ramping up. Look at your car; you have these electronic toll booth payment things tracking everywhere you go. Your car GPS tracking everywhere you go. Your cell phone tracking all your movements. Um, you know, family farms promote individualism, okay? And they're all disappearing. There's almost, and in the future, they probably won't even allow family farms, okay? The more food you can grow on your home, the better. I used to own a farm, but like an idiot, I sold the farm and kept the house. It wasn't really my decision. My wife tends to make all those decisions. Uh, but that was another stupid thing I've done in my life, allowed to happen in my family. Okay, self-sufficiency of families. Um, you know, you're more free if you're more independent and autonomous. You know, grow your own food. Have indoor gardens. There's indoor gardens you can put them up by your window and grow food. A lot of people sprayed so much, you know, herbicides and stuff on their lawns, they destroyed their soil. And, you know, they might really wish they had that soil in the not-too-distant future. Uh, when you're in a big city, you don't have as much self-sufficiency as you do rural. The zoning codes are different. You got to obey all kinds of onerous rules, and I think the thing coming in the future is going to be social credit scores. So basically, if you don't agree with everything that you're forced to agree with, that'll lower your social credit score and potentially, you know, block you away from food, etc. So that's basically a step towards slavery, where you must submit and obey, or you can't have any food, or you can't have a job. And I hope society doesn't go down that path, but it certainly seems like it's 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 headed there. Cooperation, you know, freedom comes from cooperation within communities and individuals. You know, a good community, the people help each other. You know, they, they work for their own good. I, I used to know some farmers in some of these farming communities. And uh, I have friends in some of these places, and, you know, they lived pretty good life, and they were pretty nice to each other. I used to know farmers in Iowa and stuff, and I liked them. Um, and nowadays, you know, individualism is kind of being taken away. Everybody is forced to wear a mask, and it's like an animal wearing a bridle in its mouth. And I think one of the big th reasons for that is it gets people to be less likely to talk to each other. There's something humiliating, embarrassing, dehumanizing about having to wear a mask for a conversation. Okay, um, healthy eating and living, you know, creates a healthy immune system. More outdoor air, more outdoor exercise, more sunshine. That creates healthy, vibrant people, you know, versus this indoor process, city lifestyle, endless, you know, problems and et cetera. They're stuck in their houses and they're not allowed to go out and the processed food. It's all a path towards obesity, sickness, and shortened life. 
Okay, uh, free speech is important. You need to be able to speak freely to work your way towards the truth. And you need the truth in order to figure out what to do and how to have predictable results from anything that you do. So what's happening more and more is anything that's not approved of gets labeled as misinformation, disinformation, hate speech, and it's forbidden or banned or shadow banned and all that stuff. And all this stuff prevents people from telling the truth and prevents people from knowing the truth, which is to their detriment. Think about any animal in the wild. It has to perceive reality accurately if it wants to survive, if it wants to reproduce. So not being allowed to perceive reality correctly um, decreases your chances of survival, okay, and decreases your chances of longevity. Okay, like I said, local control should be the way it is for schools. You know, different communities got some different interests, okay, and they're going to have different interests in what to read, etc. And the more things are tailored to the interest of the student in the locality, the better the school will be. Okay, you can take a bunch of homeschoolers and academically they'll kick the butt off of any public school by far on their test results. Okay, biblical ethics. You need that. We've talked about this before. If you're creating the image of God, you, then you're partly divine. You're entitled to natural rights. And that'll include the rights to property, the right to safety. No one can experiment on you. On the other hand, if you go with the modern trend, which is to say atheistic Darwinism, you're just a talking primate, then you've got no rights. You're just a talking monkey in that, in that worldview, which is the one accepted by the United States universities. And then, you know, talking monkeys have owners, okay? And they have zero rights except what their owner gives them. They have zero expectation of the ability to own property or to be safe in any way. And they can be experimented on whenever their owner wants to. They're just property. They're livestock, like a farm animal. People don't understand, but what atheism means is that you have no more rights than a farm animal. It's important to understand that. Because if people accept atheistic Darwinism, as they largely have already and are doing so more and more, you're basically saying, I'm a talking monkey, and I don't deserve any freedom or rights or property. It's a very, very much against the in interest of the individual to do that. You know, in a communist country, they'll just say, hey, you got the right blood type. We want your kidneys. We'll take your kidneys out. You know, too bad. There's nothing you could do. You have no rights in an atheistic society. That's important to know. I don't know why these things are so hard for all these low IQ people to understand. This is really important. Okay, religion is good. Religion unites people. It creates friendships. It gets people together in community. And it does a lot of other good things. And it increases hope. But in atheistic Darwinistic society, first they'll say, oh, separation of religion and other things. But then eventually the, the religion will be forbidden. So, um, you know, tyrannical rulers, they don't want religion. It kind of, it's religion is a thing, especially for poor people. It unites and helps the poor people and empowers them. You think they want that? No. They want their livestock to just shut up and do as they're told. So anyways, just to give people a little idea of how this all works, because our futures depend on understanding this.